Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Real View Show. Real views with real people, or in this case, real person. My name is Miles. Check at Miles Reviews for more. I have been doing reviews on my Instagram and Facebook, and I've also been doing this podcast of late. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks if you come back for another episode. Um, so we got a lot of stuff to chat about this week. But um, in particular, we will be discussing a bit of WandaVision, just a little bit. And the main talk will be on One Night in Miami. I dropped a review for that um, last week, it would be, by the time this drops. And yeah, just what? Let's take a deeper look at it, because it's just that interesting a movie. So um, yeah, we'll be talking about that. And also, just a reminder, guys, remember there's time codes in the comments, just in case you don't want to hear me ramble about other stuff. If you want me to just get straight down to business, or if there's something in particular you want to skip over, or listen to, or go back on, whatever, there are time codes in the description. So just take note of that, and then you can go wherever you want. But to be honest, listen to the whole show, because it's all good, right? Probably. (laughs) Thanks. So how is everybody doing? Everybody okay? I know it's, it's been a real crazy week. Just it's been a weird. It's a whole weird time anyway. But what a crazy week it's been. Um, just up up top, you know. Obviously, we had, we had a few, we had a few deaths. Um, so I just want to big up, uh, rest in peace to Dustin Diamond, who played Screech from, um, Saved by the Bell, most notably, and um. Yeah, I know, like, he had a troubled life or whatever, but, you know, it's sad, man. I don't know if he's going to do anything in the future or soon to come, but, man, like, that's much harder right there, you know. Um, rest in peace also to Cicely Tyson. Oh, my gosh. Legend. African-American actress. Just, she's been killing it from day, man. And um, she's done a lot. She's done a lot. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know what to say, man, but... She will be missed, but she's a legend and she she had, you know, she had a long life and she put a lot into that life. So mad respect to her, man. And yeah, it's just, ah, uh, it sucks, man. But, you know, she's resting. She's cool. She's, like I say, she had a full life and, you know, she's just, um, she's in a better place than the rest of us. <laughs> let's, let's look at it that way. And of course, um, we uh, quite recently we lost Christopher Plummer as well. I dropped um, a review for Knives Out in his honour on my Instagram over the weekend. Um, so check that out. Get a chance on my Instagram, on my Facebook. But Christopher Plummer, man, another legendary actor, man. Just been around in the game for time, you know, doing his thing. Putting it down. And, um, yeah, man, uh, it's just... Don't get me wrong, like, I don't, I don't think I know a lot of his movies off the top of my head. But I've probably seen him more than I think I have. He's... For me, he's one of those actors, you know, he just kind of shows up and everything and I don't know. But he's, yeah, major talent loss, man. Just, oh, another one, you know. And then Captain Sir Tom Moore. Like, come on, coronavirus. What is going on, man? Done to Captain Sir Tom Moore. If you don't know, um, basically in the UK, um, there's this dude, Captain Sir Tom Moore, who served in, in the World War. He's a vet. And basically at his um, care home, his elderly elder, elderly person's home, he basically took his Zimmer frame and decided he was going to do like 100 laps or something around the, um, around the grounds to raise money for NHS. And, you know, it was, you know, it's just he just wanted to do a small little thing like he was hoping like 4,000. This guy raced, and I don't know the exact amount. I'm going to look it up right now. Hold on one second. Yeah, but basically he, he just, um, he raised so much more. And was, I think, the thing about this guy, yeah, is, the thing about Captain Sir Tom Moore is that he just sort of came in at a time where it was like the coronavirus was just kicking everyone's butts, like, at least mentally, you know, obviously physically as well, because the cars now, but, <laughs> but, you know, everyone was cooking, kicking it mentally, and, like, we were just like, when he came out, like, this old dude, like, like, I'm talking like, he, he died at 100 years old, yeah? So this old guy, you know, looked so unassuming, just had all his, you know, badges on and stuff, and he just came out and, and you know, just sort of lifted his head up. It's like kind of the definition of stiff upper lip, you know what I mean? Or like, keep calm and carry on. And he just did, he just got on with it, you know? And he said, nah, you know, I know we've got this pandemic going on, but, you know, I'm going to help out any way I can. 
And he got his little Zimmer frame and he just started walking around. Initially, he set out to raise £1,000 and he ended up, it kind of ended up going viral. And through that, he ended up raising £32 million for the NHS charities by completing 100 laps of his garden. I mean, what a G, man. I mean, legend. I just got, I'll take my hat off to you, sir. Yeah, I hope you're resting easy, man. Just amazing. I know he's not an actor or musician or whatever, but technically, I mean, he did have that. Um, single with Michael Ball as well um, Never Walk Alone their cover so yeah man but it's just mad what a year what a year but he was an inspiration so let's remember that and just be cool with that I mean what a life what a life and what a world we live in but hey it can only get better okay and speaking of getting better um, I know I know it's not really a it's not a great transition but hey let's just go a bit it was seamless speaking of getting better um, some good news so Ryan Coogler basically has teamed up with um, some others. I can't find out their names. Let's find out. Let's give, let's give the people their juice. All right. So basically Ryan Coogler is the founder of a company called Prox- Proximity Me- Media. Um, he set this up. Uh, this is a multimedia company founded by Ryan Coogler, Zinzi Coogler, and Sev Ohanian, and Ludwig Goranson, Archie Davis, and Peter Nix. Um, with a mission to create event-driven feature films, television, soundtracks and podcasts that look to bring audiences closer together through stories solving often overlooked subjects and people. Thank you, Marvel.com, for that little yeah breakdown. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, it's Lindsay Kugel. Is that his wife? I know I'm rambling here, but just stay with me for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zinzi Kugel. That's his wife. So him and his wife... Along with those others, including Ludwig Goransson, who I believe Ludwig was the one who worked on the um, Black Panther score. Ludwig Garrison, he is the guy who worked on the score for Black Panther. Right, so Proximity Media, basically uh, Ryan Coogler struck a deal with um, Disney and Marvel to create a Wakanda series exclusive to Disney+. Plus. Oh my days, oh my days, I'm so guest for this, I can't lie to you, I'm so guest on it. Let me just calm down for a sec. Okay, so basically, we're getting a Black Panther series. A Wakanda series. A series set in Wakanda, uh, looking at the people of Wakanda and the things going on. Now, one of the reasons I'm so aghast about this is, A, it's Black Panther, you know, that world anyway. You know, it's Wakanda. Um, B, it means more black people on our screens. Like, come on. Like, black people in good roles. Decent, meaty roles. And it's going to be high quality because it's, in partnership with Disney and Marvel, you know what I mean? So it has to be, the standard's got to be, you know, and if you don't know, I was doing a little, you know, you know when you put your your hand up with the, with the um, circle. I think that's the white power sign now, isn't it, apparently? Take everything, man. Long. But you know what I mean, the little chef's kiss thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's big, man, that's big. And you know what, also as well, I... I don't know if you remember in previous episodes when I was talking about One Division coming back, uh, One Division coming, um, like launching, that you know I was gassed because finally there's some new MCU content. I did mention that I was watching uh, one of the things I was watching was Avengers Assemble, the cartoon series, the new one, the newest one that was on Disney XD. I was watching that, and I'm not gonna lie to you, yeah, that series was kind of trash. It was I'm not gonna that whole that whole show, it had its moments. But for the most part, yeah, take it or leave it, you know what I mean? But recently I've gone up to the series. So basically there's a there's a show finale where, spoilers alert, but I'm not going to spoil it too tough. There's a show finale where basically the Avengers uh, face off against this guy called the Beyonder. After that series concludes, the animation style completely changes and I think it's because they were probably trying to run it alongside the new Spider-Man cartoon, which I've seen a cu- couple of episodes of. You know you know the newest one that was on XD, where it just focuses on Peter as a kid and coming up in high school or whatever? That cartoon don't look too great either, to be honest. Anyway, they, the animation style changes. Once, that, once they switched over... At some point, a new storyline com- comes in that uh, features on the Black Panther. And the way that Black Panther is portrayed in this cartoon series, he's slightly a bit pompous and annoying. But through the, this new Black Panther's quest storyline you get, 
um, that goes on for many episodes, you actually kind of get to understand him a bit more and get to like him. And also, like, it's more focused on, like, Wakanda and, like, Shuri and, you know, T'Challa and even goes back to some of the previous Black Panthers as well. So it's really interesting. Yeah, so if you like your animation stuff, check it out. It's, it's halfway decent, so that's good. But, um, sorry, I digress. Back to the Wakanda series. Yeah, this is big, man. Like, I'm going to see some live action Wakanda business going down. Wakanda forever. Am I right? You know, that's that's serious. So... I'm glad that's happened, and that's a real good look. Um, yeah, just excited about that. I'm not sure exactly when it's dropping, but um, yeah, it, apparently it's a five-year exclusive TV deal. And shout out to Black Girl Nerds. Follow at Black Girl Nerds. That's where I first heard this news, and you know, then I kind of looked into it and saw these all the stuff. But they were the first ones who sort of put me on it. So shout out to Black Girl Nerds. If you like your comic book stuff, if you like black people which everyone should, <laughs> then check them out, follow follow what they're doing. It's a real good look. Okay, and in other news, Celeste uh, has dropped her new album. She's got a deluxe version out on Spotify. The album is called I'm Not Your Muse by Celeste. It's gone to number one, as many predicted. And it's a decent album, you know, it's a good album. I like it. I enjoyed listening to it. It's kind of got like kind of a... Uh, I don't know, it's a bit of a... What I, I think what I like about it most is that it's a bit of a... It's kind of diverse, you know? It's not all just sort of a mellow vibe and it's not all like a hype vibe. It's, I mean, I wouldn't say there's a hype vibe in there, but there's a bit more... There's songs with a bit more, you know, oomph to them in terms of like gusto or whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling that. She's kind of got um, some Amy Winehouse vibes in there as well. And she's just genuinely uh, really talented and soulful singer so if you like that kind of thing i would say definitely give it a listen to check it out it's a good project yeah man really good and congratulations also on going to number one in the uk that's brilliant also another artist i've been watching for quite a while really like that stuff is um arlo parks Does anyone know about arlo parks you might know for her from the song black dog or eugene um i hope you don't mind mm. I hope it don't, uh, 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 I don't know, as you know, I don't know how the song goes. But anyway, Arlo Park, she's um she's also dropped her album, which is called Oh man. How do I not know what this is called? This is horrendous. Give me a sec, I'm gonna get it right now. That's right. Ooh, I like that title as well. So her debut album's dropped, Collapsed in Sunbeams. So you can get that on Spotify or whatever. And that is a really cool album as well. It's kinda like going indie neo soul r&b kind of vibe not even r&b actually just leave it at indie indie slash neo soul like it's not it's not really definable if i'm honest but those are two albums i've been banging out this week and i've also been going to back over andy minio's back catalog just because i wanted some like some real good christian rap and you know what it's really good even even did a track like this this is off that um sword 2 i think it was called um project he did he's even got a track with fonte from little brother if you know about little brother then you know that's big because um and it's a good track obviously but yeah that's the music that, that i like <laughs> that's the music i am liking this week why why can i not talk properly this today I um, just ate a bunch of chocolate, so that might be why. But anyway, okay, before we jump into the next segment, um, I don't usually do this, but I just wanted to shout out quickly Blackburn Entertainment, which I am co-founder of. Um, but basically, Blackburn Entertainment, we're an entertainment company, and we provide uh, singers and musicians and DJs for functions. Now, obviously, with the pandemic going on, there's not been a lot of functions for us to get involved in, and... To be honest, it's against government guidelines, blah, 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 all that jazz. So, but one thing that is happening is Valentine's Day is coming up. And throughout the month of February, Blabber Entertainment will be offering their music mail service, their new music mail service at a discounted rate. So if you wanted to book that for this month, for Valentine's or for the future, book it now because you get cheaper. Uh, Okay, so what's music mail basically? Basically, music mail is a song to your to you service so basically um there's you get two packages there's dance on your do- doorstep which is a socially distanced performance of a requested song um obviously this must be local to the performance area in line with government guidelines um and there's another service called send one your love this is a recorded performance of a personalized song 
these are acapella versions and they can be personalized with videos and images um, the songs are original and made from a love note that you've made or a message that you've made or the, and the information that you provide about the recipient the person getting the song and um, yeah you'll get a personalized message song for them so that's a really cool present really different you know and obviously it's a pandemic it's all a bit poop at the moment and it's a great way just to make someone put a smile on someone's face you know so I, i'd say go for it contact blackbird entertainment for more email address is black underscore bird underscore entertainment at hotmail.com or for more information go to the website www.black hyphen bird hyphen entertainment.com hope i got that right if i didn't it doesn't matter because there's going to be images up if you're not watching it then well just remember blackbird entertainment you'll find us somewhere but yeah that's music mail coming to you okay so let's talk about wandavision again so um you know a lot of youtubers and uh, movie reviewers and that kind of stuff are all talking about wandavision and anyone who loves marvel is pretty much talking about wandavision i you know at my work i work with um a lovely lady who is just sort of into rom-coms and stuff so as you can imagine i don't really get to talk about wandavision with her um i don't really get to talk about wandavision with my wife i don't really get to talk about it with many people um just because you know we're all busy i'm sure i could call someone up and talk about uh, i have friends and stuff don't worry but um i just want to talk about it with you guys briefly if you haven't seen it and you want to see it maybe it's the way you need to skip but i'm just going to be going through the episodes sort of quite briefly so um from episode one and two you basically got the black and white sort of sitcom format and and by the way i just want to say this this show is is kind of weird but in a good way. You know, in terms of like advertising and prom- the promotions, you know, it does what it says on the tin. You were going to get like this weird sitcom going through the decades and that kind of thing. And we all knew that. And I think if you're sort of sitting there like, don't get me wrong, like through throughout the black and white episodes, I was a bit like, come on, man, what's going to happen? Because what is about these, if I just explain it briefly, is uh, Vision died at the end of um, Infinity War. So he's dead, right? So, um... Thanos done. Pluck the stone out of his head. Oh, by the way, has anyone seen that rapper? Is his name Uzi? What What the hell is that young man doing? <laughs> Don't got the diamond in his head looking like trying to look like Vision or a character out of Steam Universe. I d- anyway, I digress. But um, basically, he, um, yeah, he got killed and, you know, Wanda and Vision were just culminating their relationship together. So it broke her. She previously, previously um, lost her, um, her twin brother, Pietro, aka Quicksilver so as you can imagine she's pretty um pretty traumatized by the whole thing in this series basically Wanda is um or what we believe is that Wanda has manifested this whole world um for her and Vision to live in and she's somehow sort of reanimated Vision brought him back to life um he is uh like a synthesoid cyborg type so um yeah, I don't, I don't know the technicalities of all that. It's all science fiction anyway. Does that make sense? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he's kind of been brought back to life. But um, in the first few episodes, you know, it kind of does what it says on the tin. We're given the sort of I Love Lucy, Honeymooners, sort of black and white, 50s, 40s comedy, you know. So um, that's that's basically what it is. And for those two episodes, it's like, um, like what's going on? It's a bit like, it's fun to watch. And, you know, it's kind of enjoyable and in a charming sort of way. But yeah, you do get a bit like, okay, come on, what's going on here? But at the same time, like that's that's what you were sold, you know. I mean, obviously, you know, there's going to be more to it, but that's what you, what you were sold. So you know, you're just gonna have to hold on and see what's gonna happen. And I think the problem is where these days there's so much stuff where you can just it's all out at the same time and you can just binge it all. You do end up getting a bit impatient. Now, by episode three, I think by the end of episode two, they turned Technicolor, so you've gone up to probably the 60s 70s now enter character Geraldine who we don't know yet but who is Monica Rambu Rambu now Rambo Rambu Rambo now if you don't know Captain Marvel's friend was ah oh, you know what I'm gonna have to look it up I can't remember her name you know um but basically um Monica Rambu is the daughter of Captain Marvel's friend and I've got to say in terms of casting great actress and you know it doesn't always matter whatever it's just a thing isn't it it's just 
it's all just a show and we're, we're smart enough to know who people are but um in terms of casting a girl that looks like her now the girl in captain marvel um because this was captain marvel was in the 80s and this is sort of in the present time kind of yeah it's like they look nothing like each other if we're honest, like, the girl in Captain Marvel is, like, a really light-skinned girl. And just there's nothing like her. Like, um, the Monica Rambrou now. Yeah, Monica Rambrou at 11 years old in Captain Marvel. is played by Akira Akbar. The mother's name is... Why is she so low down? Than, have I missed it? So I'm just on IMDB right now trying to figure it out. Shout out to IMDB, the source of much of my information. Oh, there we go, Maria. Ramia Rambo is the Captain Marvel's friend and ally in Captain Marvel. Monica Rambo is the daughter. And basically, she's all grown up in this. And she's in this third episode. And yeah, by the end of it, she's sort of like kicked out. She's just suddenly gone. Like, uh, the, the great thing about the show is it's got all these like nice tea things going on. But there's also this sort of sinister, there's a, there's a sinister undertone, like something's not right. And, you know, we all know, we all think it's probably something to do with Wanda because every time Vision starts questioning stuff, she's like, like, oh, nothing's wrong. And then suddenly the scene, like, either, like, cuts away or goes to the next part or whatever. But, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of, you're like, what's, what's happening here? What's going on? So let's get forward to episode four now. And we are brought to the present, right? And so Monica Rambeau, we see her in a hospital room and she's suddenly, like, She's coming, but she's coming back. She's like, you know, it's the uh, undo snap snaps and brings everyone back. We learn that she was basically, they call it the blip in the MCU, which is a stupid name. But if you think about it, not everyone in Endgame was on the battlefield, so they don't know it was a snap. So I don't know, they just call it the blip, which kind of makes sense because, you know, it's a bit of a blip. You know, people have been gone for five years. It's a bit more than a blip, if you ask me. But anyway. Because, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, uh, people are brought back and she's one of those people. Yeah, it's really interesting because the other thing is as well, um, they sort of, uh, I'm struggling to remember everyone's names now as well, is you get um, the FBI agent from Ant-Man and the Wasp. By the way, it's just this guy is just uh, he's such a great actor. It's quite funny to watch. The FBI agent Randall Park, uh, played by Jimmy Woo, you know, he's trying to get some bond with what's going on because this is skipping back to before Monica gets kicked out of Wanda's world in a way. Just trying to get some bond with what's going on. So it assembles the team and all that kind of stuff. Or, you know, joins joins the forces. You got the you got a sword there. And it's all a bit weird really, but um but stuff starting to get revealed. So that's what I open up. So like, you know, episode four goes back to that and then by episode five, what you've seen is how Monica ended up getting kicked out and the events that follow that as well. And let me tell you, this series is going somewhere. So if you if you if you dropped off at episode two if you were, or at episode one and said, you know what, this ain't for me and you're an MCU fan, I'm telling you, come back, come on down. Come back come on back. Cause I'm telling you it's getting good. Yeah man, I'm just looking forward to how this whole thing plays plays out. It's been very interesting so far. And, you know, they played it very, like, ooh, like, is there, there's a lot of mystery. And there's a lot of theories flying around and whatever and what. I'm not interested in, I just want to see what happens. I have a few theories myself, but I'm not going to bait people like that, you know. So I think just saddle in and give it a watch. If you like your MCU, you'll definitely enjoy this. So, um, yeah, that's WandaVision. Okay, time for a big one. This is One Night in Miami. So what's it all about in Governor? Sam Cook played by Odoom, Cassius Clay played by Gurry, Jim Brown played by Hodge, and Malcolm X played by Ben Adir walk into a hotel room. Although it sounds like it, it's not the start of a bad joke that I haven't written yet, although there's still time. Um, this is the fictional account of that night. This movie is directed by Regina King, written and adapted from the play by Kemp Powers, who was one of the writers on Soul. And Regina King obviously you know who she is. Big in the game. If you don't know who she is, what are you talking about? If Bill Street could talk. Enemy of the State. Watchmen. I mean, come on now. Seven, what is it called? Seven hours or seven seconds? Bad thing she's in. Just check out her name. Check out the work if you haven't seen it. You're missing out. And you probably have seen her. She's been in bad stuff. Okay, so my rating. A thought-provoking piece filled with quotable moments on the civil rights struggle and the roles we all have to play. 
tap it straight to my veins. Yeah, obviously I love this one. Black power, black star power. It was real interesting, man. And, you know, just deep, deep conversations. Rewatchability factor? Yeah, 100%. Even if just to copy a quote to sound smart. In all seriousness, though, this film is really interesting and has some big bars. Yeah, I really love this movie. I don't know what more to say about going into spoilers, but um, it's really good. If you haven't watched it yet, give it a watch. I'm going to try and watch it again at some point. I wanted to before doing this, but time, life, you know how it goes. Okay, so yeah, let's get into it. Spoilers. My favourite scene, Sam Cooke's a cappella story. This is where Malcolm X is telling the story of when he went to see Sam Cooke in concert. The guy that was on before him just totally messed it up for him. I, if it was me, I don't know what I'd do in this situation, you know. I, if, even if I tried a Sam Cooke team, would it have worked? I don't know. But basically what happens is the, um, this guy is playing before Sam. And before Sam comes on stage, he tells him, like, don't F it up. And then basically he goes off stage, this other guy, and Fs it up for him. He like somehow cuts out cuts the electricity to the place or or messes with the sound equipment yeah everything's off basically and then, then sam's better like oh no i long for this i'm out of here like i ain't i ain't about this right now so i'm gone and sam's basically left on the stage alone you know no microphone and <laughs> just like what, what like as a singer yeah and this is not a small crowd right as a singer when you're in front of a large crowd sometimes in certain rooms it's hard enough for everyone to hear you even if you do have a microphone to hear you clearly now without a microphone you got no hope without mashing up your voice you know what i mean but what this guy does right he gets everyone to stomp their feet it's like dum 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 ha dum 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 oh dum 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 ha dum 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 oh and then he gets everyone in the crowd to do this beat right so so basically what he does is he gets the crowd and he gets them to become the band for them. And just as about Ma- just as Malcolm X is about to leave, he hears this happening and he turns around. Because the crowd are getting a bit rowdy as well. So he hears this happening and he turns around and sees how Sam Cooke has commanded the crowd. And prior to this, um, Sam sort of walked out. This is like in the real time now of the scene. Um, Sam had walked out the room in a huff because Malcolm X was getting on his case about, you know, not sort of writing enough songs for the cause or doing enough for the cause kind of thing and you know Sam was kind of like nah F that kind of thing you know I'm taking care of my own business I own my stuff you know that's me empowering my brothers and that is is part of the cause as well kind of thing which you know is arguably true but um he plays in Bob Dylan's song uh what's it called Blowing in the Wind how many roads must a young man cross before he becomes a man you know, it's just like, kind of like, how is it a white man managed to write a song that has more depth than anything you've ever written, kind of thing? And, you know, crazy boys and all. The two kind of make, make up while Malcolm's retelling this story. And um, Malcolm's basically just saying to him, like, you know, you got so much more in you. You, you know, you need to use it, kind of thing. Like, kind of just like, kind of egging him on to, to be better, I guess. That was my favourite scene, because to see the way that Sam just took that real horrible crappy situation and trust me as a singer i know and just made it work was incredible to see um my favorite character muhammad ali i mean i mean cassius i think you know he is the greatest and he's good at cooling the gang and keeping them going forward for the most part you know also he's so he's so charismatic it's just ridiculous like even if you wanted to hate him i don't think you fully could i think that's probably what a lot of his competitors found frustrating about him not just him running his mouth but also that actually he's he's a guy kind of guy you really you want to be around you know so or maybe you want to be like yeah real cool character and really put well played by gory someone said the best portrayal of muhammad ali they've ever seen and i was like wait a minute will smith and ali and to be fair i haven't seen that movie for a very very long time i'd be interested to see it again from what i remember will killed that man and he had to play a lot more of Ali. Uh, but I don't know. It, it was definitely a really good performance. That's for sure. Definitely worked out for it. My goodness. You know when you look at yourself and you're like. Hmm. Maybe it's time to stick to get back to training. And put down a chocolate. But then you're like. Ah. Gee. <laughs> no I'm joking. It's, it's inspirational. Really good work there. I think one of the. um Actually one of the trainers. Shout out to me. Because uh, I dropped the review on my Facebook and Insta. Yeah. One of the, one of the trainers. Um. Just said thanks for the review. Glad you liked it. Um, shout! In fact, I'm gonna find out right now because um, 
a lot of the time, look, the thing about social media is anyone can contact you anywhere, right? And you have no idea what they are, who they are, if they are who they really are. If that makes any sense. So I'm just going to, this is like, this is going to be like my first proper name drip, if, if he is. He looks legit though. No, I don't believe you. But his name is Giacomo Farsi. I think he was, he must have been one of the trainers on this movie because he's looking pretty dench. And he basically just said, yeah, we worked hard for this movie. We glad you liked it. A couple of emojis there. I can't see all of them because I'm looking at my laptop rather than my phone. Which maybe I should look at my phone. But now I'll lose my notes. So what are you going to do? Shout out to Gio, Gio, Gio Como Farsi. Yeah, for the love, man. Yes, I did love the movie. And great work. Yeah, so my other favourite character. Uh, it was sort of a toss-up between the two. But I think overall, in the movie anyway, Cassius Clay was um, my favourite. But... Close second was Sam Cooke, like I said before. I mean, this in this movie, you never sort of realise how much of a boss this guy was. Like, like he wouldn't take any crap. And you, the thing is, you got to remember, right? So around this time, they still had these segregated charts, Negro music, and then there was, um, you know, there was pop music and rock and whatever. But, you know, you could never cross over because of your skin colour. You could write songs for white artists and that kind of thing but you yourself could never cross over which is why like people like the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and all that they were able to do so well and not not to say that they weren't great bands in their own right and all that kind of thing but they aspired to be like a lot of these black soul artists and these rock and roll artists because let's remember that you know rock and roll was you know isn't originally music of black origin you know and um they aspired to be like these guys. They made it basically from being inspired, but also because they had the right skin colour at the time. If we're being real, if there weren't segregated charts, you know, and people were just allowed to be them regardless, be themselves regardless of their skin colour or whatever, would the Beatles be as big? Would Rolling Stones be as big? I don't know, but I'm just saying, it's, it's interesting to think about. Yeah, my other favourite would have to be Sam Cooke, you know, such a boss... And just mad talented and skilled. Like, this guy just seemed to be able to turn anything into, like, a really beautiful song. So, props to Sal Cook and uh, to Leslie O'Doom Jr. who played a really, really great cast, to be honest. Okay, so quotable, quotable moments. There's, there's just so many quotes in this. I really should have given this another watch just to see if what, there's anything else that came out. But um, I'll just go through some of my favourites anyway. So, um, Cassius Clay, played by Ido Gori. Um, so... Oh my goodness. And then so I was like, what's wrong, Cass? So, Why am I so pretty? It's just so... <laughs> it just made me laugh, man. It's just like typical Muhammad Ali behavior. But the guy's just so funny, man. It's just like... He proper... Because when he... Even when he, he said, oh my goodness. Like, I was like, oh snap. What's going on? What's going on? Or like, you know, is there something wrong with the room? Or... But um, no, he was just... um, He was just feeling himself. <laughs> uh, this this one was a really interesting quote to me. So... um. Jamal, he's the guy who was um, on the door with that militant dude from The Wire. <laughs> um, I've got to find out his name, actually. Let's find out their names. So, uh, bear me just a sec. Um, but basically, um, yeah, he was watching the door for Malcolm X with that militant dude. And basically, yeah, uh, they, they he was just asking him about uh, joining Islam. You know, Cassius was basically converting. I don't know if it was that night or the morning after, but... Um, yeah, he was converting, basically, and that's mainly why Malcolm X was meeting with him. That's mainly how the relationship formed, really. Lance Reddick played Kareem X. That's the militant guy. Lance Reddick, the guy from um, The Wire. I still haven't watched all The Wire, by the way. What's that about? I need to get into that. But anyway, yeah, so he's playing a militant guy. And oh my gosh, was that guy militant. Like, you wouldn't want to mess with him, but at the same time, you just be like, dude, just like, chill. Jeez. But anyway, so Jamal was talking to... Um, Jim Brown about joining Islam, uh, asking him if he regretted it, basically. And Jamal said, I reckon if I'd gotten with the brother sooner, we could have nipped it in the bud and put a foot in Roland's ass. Know what I'm saying? And Jim says, you don't need religion for that. You could just join a gang. Jamal says, what's the damn difference? I mean, it's a really interesting quote. Oh, by the way, just for a bit of context, he was um, talking about um, being out one of his bullies back in the day, um, rather than getting beaten up himself. Um, but what's interesting about that quote is obviously the whole gang mentality. And I, I, I'll i say this, like obviously I'm a Christian. Well, maybe not obviously, but I'm a, I'm a Christian. 
And I mean, the thing about religion is, yes, it can be very clicky. It can be very much like a gang sometimes. And, and we've got to remember, like, if, you know, don't, don't get triggered. Like, there's a difference between religion, organisations and faith, you know. And there's, there's, it's always kind of trying, trying to strike that balance. But, um, yeah, like, sometimes it can get a bit like gang affiliation, you know, basically. So, yeah, it's just a really interesting quote to me. Oh, I love this next quote here. So, um, Jim Brown again, played by Aldis Hodge, is just talking to Cassius Clay about, you know, basically their work, what they do. And Jim says, we're all just gladiators, Cass, with our rulers sitting up there in the box, giving us the thumbs up or the thumbs down. I don't want no ruler. Way, I don't want no ruler. That's sick, you know. And, like, it's so true, like, obviously going back again to the time period it was, like, it was so... What's the what, what's the word I'm trying to think of? The like just the unjustness in like the devaluation of black people was just so obvious and inescapable. And these guys were you know coming up to the prime of their their time. You know Malcolm X was making big waves, even though within the Islam com- community there were you know there'd been a bit of a, a bit of a breaking point or whatever. But you know he's kind of making big waves in terms of civil rights and hearing it, having his voice heard. Uh, Jim was at the top of his game and, you know, was now looking at a possible film career. Muhammad Ali had just become, or Cassius Clay then, had just become the heavyweight champion. And Sam Cooke, you know, he was he was singing up all them charts, appearing on all these different shows and writing for other people, making loads of money from that as well. Um, they're all really at the top of their game but to still live in this world where no matter how successful or sought after you are you're still you're still just a black you're still just a black i can't bring myself to say you know the, the n-word but you're still just a black guy you know they, that's all they see you know when you deep it they might like you but you're still just black to them so that's kind of mad but yeah i don't want to rule that definitely Oh, I love this as well. This, this is what... So this is another one from Sam Cook and what made me think this guy is such a boss. So he, he's talking about just like, um, I guess, his business really and how um, how he runs. And he's going kind of like, everybody talking about they want a piece of the pie. I want the damn recipe. And it's so true, like, you know, so I think sometimes we sort of like look at, look at things and like, oh, I wish I had a bit of that or wish I had a bit of that. But actually, the ownership is the important thing like you know the ownership is what's gonna be the long game you know so like there's a really nice car and you you want that car you might lease it or whatever but actually if if you can find a way to own the company that makes that car i mean you're laughing you know what i mean so i guess a better example would have been to use sam cook's music but um there you go (laughs) you know what i mean and another quote here i got is cassius Power just means a world where we're just safe to be us. And this is it, like, you know, so this is after Sam um, storms out of the room after his um, argument with Malcolm about doing enough for the community and all that. And, you know, the bare bones of it, like, power isn't necessarily being the strongest or whatever. It's just living in a world where you're safe to be you, you know, and that goes back just hits with so many different like communities you know the gay community black community asian community transgender whatever you know people just want to be free to be them without harassment without judgment it's a very human and real thing and i hope that everyone gets it at the end of the day time will tell but yeah okay so let's go to notes straight off the bat god i love racism i mean <laughs> I knew it was going to be one of those films, you know, where you potentially get triggered. But I think this is when I was seeing Jim Brown's story. So he basically returns home and he's talking to one of these old football coaches. Obviously a quite wealthy guy, a very wealthy guy. I mean, his porch is probably as big as half of my house. But um, yeah, very wealthy guy. And they're just talking and he's, you know, his coach is bigging him up. And, you know, you can already tell, like, from Jim's approach to the house that, Man, this is long. Like, I don't even really want to be here. But anyway, he goes. Basically, when he goes, the girl, um, the girl that comes to the door, I think it's his, I think it's the coach's daughter who comes to the door is like, uh, who are you? Like, kind of thing, blah, blah, blah. Like, because he's black in it. Like, kind of thing, don't really want you here. It's like, oh, I'm Jim Brown. And then once he, once he drops his name, she's like, oh my gosh, that NFL starts. So, you know, she gets all gas, whatever. She's like, oh, wait here. I'll just get him for you. 
runs to the house, gets that old coach, old coach comes out and really just like pouring on the milk, like just like, oh yeah, you're so great, you're the you're the best this town has ever produced, blah blah blah, like talking his name up and down, like you know what I mean, just like proper like admiration and you know, you're thinking, wow, this guy really likes him. And then the girl calls the coach back in to say, oh, um, we need to move this. I mean, it's like a cupboard or something, like whatever. They need to move this piece of furniture. And Jim, you know, gets up to offer his help. And and the coach is like, oh, no, nah, thank you, Jim. You, you, but you know we can't have because in the house. It's like, what? Are you serious? Like... Even after, yeah, it goes back to that thing of like, you know, no matter how successful you are or whatever, they will just see you as a black person. And it's just like, that's mad. This guy was singing his praises like the guy was the best thing since Jesus. And still, he's not good enough to come into your house. That's just, it was just mad. It was just mad to me. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to, um, Ledio Doom Jr. So he was playing Sam Cook, obviously. This guy's voice is silk, man. Like silk. Like I remember finding out twenty so at the end of twenty twenty that he dropped a Christmas album, and I watched the live performance and I was like, oh man, I love this. But I found it like nearing New Year's, so it's like a bit too late for me to listen to a Christmas album again. But I mean, I could have done it. Who cares? But now it's just like now it just feels silly. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, next Christmas that is going on a playlist definitely. Leslie O. Jooms Jr. Obviously, if you've seen Hamilton, he played Aaron Burr, the guy who's... Uh, I'm trying to figure what song you'd know if you can't remember the character. But um, just look it up. Aaron Burr. Yeah, dude's voice is silk, man. Love it. I also love that there's this aerial shot when um, Malcolm... Sam was the first this so wasn't him. Malcolm, Cassius and Jim, when they arrive at the um, hotel, I love that aerial shot of them getting out. I think it's a Cadillac... But they're coming out of Cadillac with the suicide doors. Mm, beautiful man. That's it's a really it's a really cool shot. It's a really cool looking car. <laughs> no, no, you you should have known it won't it wasn't gonna be a party party with Malcolm. Like, did he? I don't I don't think I, I don't know what these guys were expecting that Malcolm was gonna like you know bring strippers and you know like be pouring liquor everywhere. Dude's like a hardcore not hardcore but like he's a you know more or less a hardcore Muslim. Like, it's not it's not on that stuff, so... If he's arranging a party, you best believe it's not going to be one of them parties. Just saying. <laughs> Sam's saying one day it's going, going to be one show for all. It's kind of foreshadowing. Like, I was talking about the segregating... Um, the segregated charts and the music. It segregated everything, but... Yeah, basically it's going to be one show for all one day. And, you know, it kind of is. We get, Or at least we're getting there with most things. When the conversation got heated on the roof... From then on, it's interesting the arguments on different types of success or giving back or community or civil rights activism. So basically, the whole like, I don't know, there's this whole like kind of discussion over, you know, what you do to be doing something. And um, it gets to be heated. It's sort of interesting because, I don't know, I guess what I'm saying is that not everybody necessarily needs to speak from the front. You know, there's many different ways to help a cause. You could help fund it. You could give advice. You could um, sponsor. You could write a record for it. You could um, promote. You know, there's so many different ways to help a cause. And it's not... So, like, for example, the whole Black Lives Matter marches and protests in the pandemic. A lot of people, rightly or wrongly, didn't want to go outside, which is understandable. It's a pandemic going on, you know. You don't want to put yourself out there. But on the other side of that, a lot of people did, especially a lot of young people. I think even within the black community, sometimes there's been a bit of um, sort of back and forth or a bit of a clash, shall I say, on whether you should, you know, what, what you should do. Because um, the, I guess the younger generation are just like moved and want action and are angry. And then I guess the older generation are saying, look, yeah, we're all angry, of course. But what do you actually want? Like, what's your demands? You know, like... You know, and yeah, uh, and to be fair, both sides have have valid points. But I guess what I'm saying is, like, those protests actually did a lot in terms of setting wheels in motion to get actual viable changes happening, or at least get people talking and thinking about stuff more and in a more relevant way. So 
I know. Uh, basically, what I'm saying is Activision, Activism, sorry, Activision is games. <laughs> Activism has many different roots and roles to it, and there's many different ways to be an activist, I believe. That may change for you over time, how you sort of help or uh, speak up about a cause. But yeah, um, it's very important, I think, to get involved in some way, to do what you can, and just to know the right thing for you to do. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm getting a real, I call out, I'm getting tired right now, but I just want to end on this one. So um, the weight of justice in an unjust world must be one heavy burden to bear. So um, I'm basically, I was kind of looking at Malcolm X as a person, but also in this movie. So throughout the movie, he's very, um, he's very sort of like, you know, um, tenacious about what needs to be done. And, you know, justified in doing so. Absolutely. But then um, there's one of the final shots is a, a Molotov cocktail, basically a firebomb being thrown into his house and setting his house on fire with his family in it. So I managed to get his family in out, out and everything, praise God. And then he's basically standing on the street with his gun, looking up and down the street, trying to find out where it was coming from so he can defend his family. And that is just, you know, like, we all go through stuff, obviously, but that kind of adversity, like facing that, like, how do you bring yourself to? Obviously, you're angry, so maybe the so in 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 many ways that's probably still firing you up. But how do you bring yourself to just daily just get on and just still fight those causes? You know, when you're fight when when it's causing danger to your family, to your home, you know, it's just like how do you wake up the next day and be like, Nah, I ain't taking it. I'm going back in. I'm gonna keep going, and. You gotta give it out to brothers like that, man. They just obviously they paved the way for a lot of us. It's just, yeah, mad. Racism is mad. Injustice, prejudices, prejudices. How do you say it? <laughs> Bigotry. It's all just mad, man. And the fact that it's still going on today in some places, in many places, you know, whether blatantly or subliminally or whatever. No, cool. The world just needs to fix up, man. We've got enough going on. Let's get together and deal with it, man. Love and peace and all that, you know. But yeah, that was um that was my review for One Night in Miami. Um, yeah, there I could talk about this movie for ages. There's so much, but um, yeah, really great. Shout out again to Regina King. I mean, she really did a thing. Director de- debut. What a director de- debut, man. So cool. And Kim Powers. Um, this is actually adapted from his original play. So he he wrote a play about it. Uh, which has been done, and then he adapted it to the screenplay that we now see on Amazon Prime, uh, Prime Video. So that's really cool, man. And he was, like I say, he he was also a co-writer on Soul, so that's big. So you know, it's a lot of, like I say, it's a lot of black star power going on. And I know, I know, I like to promote these black stories. You know, I've got a blacklist and all that kind of thing. And I just think it's important, you know, to represent because otherwise a lot of these voices don't get heard. Um, the the week just gone, um, my the the film club, shout out to the Taylor Fitted Film Club. I mean, uh, we just watched uh, Moana, and um, yeah, it's a great movie, man. And but what what's also great about it is it's just not another white girl, you know, um, doing her thing, which is nothing wrong with that, you know. Shout out to all white girls to to all people but um when you know when you don't like this is like a poly you know it's polynesian people and when you don't see people of certain races or backgrounds on the screen that much uh unfortunately you know because for many of us our world's our world's views or our, our world scope is quite small they can in some ways not exist because we don't have those interactions with those people or we don't know people from those backgrounds or whatever. That's why, to me, representation is so important and I will keep on bigging up black people and ethnicities and great movies of, you know, from people with all colours and backgrounds, but especially black people because everybody needs to shine, man. And I encourage anyone else who who has a deep love for movies and everything, if, if you find something from your background, especially if you're a person of colour, that you know you're really passionate about like promote it definitely because um yeah everyone needs to get that shine and now i'll get off my soapbox now that's all i need to say about that one um so yeah that was one night in miami
Okay, so before the show is over, I just want to big up a few people. First of all, big up you for listening. Thank you for listening to another episode. It's probably the longest episode I've done, so well done for making it to the end or skipping to the end. Whatever, you know, it's fine. I don't mind. (laughs) Just as long as you're here. Yeah, so thank you for everyone who subscribed or liked or shared, read, commented, all that good stuff. Um, But I just want to big up especially Ali. Um, Officially Ali, um, she is also a fellow film reviewer, series reviewer. She does some um, hair tutorials or something as well, I think. <laughs> but um, yeah, she's always... Uh, big up yourself, Ali, if you're listening, because you're always commenting and, you know, engaging. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you following and, you know, getting involved as well. And um, I'm not going to lie to you. I haven't watched any of your videos yet, only because I haven't seen many of the things you've talked about. I really wanted to get into your looping one. Uh, I've been wanting to watch Lupin myself, but uh, my wife's been on. She's you know, it's, it's going to be a couple's thing, and you know she's not she's not making time for it. So it's been long, you know. <laughs> Gonna get myself in trouble, but um, no, uh, yeah, I really appreciate you you uh, getting involved, and I will check out your stuff soon, definitely, and be com- leaving a comment and a like as well. I'm sure. I think I've already just dis- yeah I'm already subscribed, so thanks for that. Um, yeah, so big up yourself. Um, I hope I said your name right as well, because it's not, I just realised it's not Ali, like it's spelled Ali. Ali, Ali Lay? Ali Lay. Officially Ali Lay. Um, her name is spelled A-L-I-L-E. Do give her a follow, check out her stuff. Uh, she's on social media as well, so yeah. Support us, black content makers, man. We're, we're trying to make waves here. Big up also Oliver Greaves, OGX. He is basically, he's a guy who put together the Taylor Fitted Film Club. The ta- uh, Yeah, the Taylor Fitted Film Club. Um, he's, uh, he's also another content maker. Um, his handle is OGreavesX. Basically, he put together this film club I'm a part of. And this is where I started doing reviews, to be honest. If it wasn't for him, you've been... You probably wouldn't be hearing this podcast now if it wasn't for him and my wife, basically. You probably wouldn't be hearing this. He did the team, man, and because of him, I've spent the pandemic watching movies and writing reviews. Doing other stuff as well, obviously. It's not the only stuff I'm doing. Yeah, basically just, thanks, man. Appreciate it. We've been friends for a long time. Seen a lot of stuff together. And uh, here's to more stuff and, yeah, more film club stuff as well. Thanks, dude. Appreciate you. Also, finally, just want to big up my wife. Ebony G, she, even tonight, she just, um, you know, she sort of got on my case and said, like, oh, I'll just record it tonight, you know, if you don't record it tonight, you probably won't record it. So, yes, thank you, babes, for, um, yeah, just getting me to do this. And also, in the first place, just getting me to take my reviews a bit more seriously and do something with it, you know. So, I appreciate all of you, especially you, babes, you know, you, you go for the most with me, obviously. Yeah, so that's that's it. That's another show. This is a real view show. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, comment, like, subscribe, hit that little bell button so you can stay up to date with all the episodes I post. I don't do that much, so I won't get too annoying. I just hit the table there. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, don't get too annoying. So, yeah, just stay up to date. Comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, thanks for checking it out. I hope you had a good week. I'll talk to you again soon. More reviews to come. Just take care of yourselves, stay safe, stay alive, and we will make it through. (laughs) All right, God bless and all the rest, guys. Thank you very much. Remember to follow at Miles Reviews, that's Miles with a Y, on Instagram and Facebook for more reviews, movies, TV, and music stuff.